We begin, of course, with the latest on the coronavirus and the awful, awful, awful toll from the coronavirus has hit yet another milestone, and it's not good. U.S. deaths have now surged to about 11,000. That's up from about 9,600 yesterday morning. The U.S. now has more than 368,000 reported cases. And, Anthony, the true number could be higher because of underreporting. That's right, Gail. New York continues to have by far the most cases in America. But take a look at this. Over the last 12 days, that state's daily percentage increase in cases has been trending downward. And that could mean the curve is starting to flatten, emphasize could. A crew member aboard the Comfort, the Navy hospital ship docked in New York City on the Hudson River, has tested positive for the virus. The Navy says the person is isolated from patients and operations will not be affected. The diagnosis came on the same day the ship was approved to treat coronavirus patients following a week-long delay. Tony? The U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, joins us from Washington. He is a member, of course, of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Dr. Adams, good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning. Good to be here. I, I, I want to begin. I want to begin with those glimmers of hope that the White House has been pointing to. Uh, in New York State, our hardest-hit state, hospitalizations and deaths have stabilized in the last couple of days. What does that tell us about the fight here and the fight in other emerging hotspots? Well, absolutely. I started off the week uh, telling Americans that this was going to be a really rough week, but I also wanted Americans to understand that when we've dealt with tough times in the past, the country has rallied. And, and what we're seeing now is the country is rallying. We're seeing New York and New Jersey uh, have hospitalizations level off and start to come down. Deaths are starting to uh, slow down and level off. And that's important because it tells us mitigation is working. It tells us what the American people are doing by staying at home, by social distancing, by practicing good hygiene, and the 30-day guidelines for America are actually effective, and they will help us get through to the other side of this unfortunate tragedy. Dr. Adams, how, how can we be sure that mitigation is working as well as we hope it to be working when we don't know, to put it plainly, how many Americans actually have this virus because we don't have widespread testing? So to put it more bluntly, how do we know when we're in the clear and we can get back to normal if we don't know how widespread this is? Well, th there are two questions in there, and I'll quickly unpack both of them. The most important thing is that we know mitigation is working because when we look at the curves of Washington and California, we see that they've been very flat, and that's coincident with them instituting aggressive mitigation. We see Italy and Spain uh, down on the downslopes of their curves, coincident with them starting mitigation. So we know mitigation is working. Now, you mentioned testing. Testing is a concern. Uh, we are going to be at 2 million tests this week, and it's rapidly ramping up with the commercial industry coming on board. We're also seeing more people doing antibody testing. So what I want the American people to know is I've talked with Admiral Giroir. I speak with him every day. He's our testing czar. And he assures me that by the end of this month, we should be uh, not only just doing diagnostic testing, but also having good surveillance testing across the country. Uh, at 2 million people by the end of this week, we're getting really close to South Korea's initial testing surge numbers. And we are, in fact, doing surveillance testing in some parts of the country uh, where they haven't seen a big increase in cases. So uh, we're not there and, yet, but we are moving in course, the right direction. And of course, that surveillance testing is so important. I want to touch on another point of concern, and that is the, the death rate among African Americans. In Louisiana, mm -hmm. we heard the governor say 70 percent of the fatalities are people of color. In Chicago, we heard the mayor say more than 70 percent in that city. Uh, your response to that, and should the CDC or the federal government be tracking this virus demographically to warn people? Well, Absolutely. Uh, the CDC and the federal government should be and are tracking this virus and trying to break it down by different demographic groups so that we can help people understand. But my office, long before COVID-19, has been talking about health equity, has been talking about the need to help people understand when they're at risk and to actually intervene. And when you look at being black in America, number one, uh, people, unfortunately, are more likely to be of low socioeconomic status which makes it harder to social distance. Number two, we know that blacks are more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, lung disease. And I've shared myself personally that I have high blood pressure, that I have heart disease and spent a week in the ICU due to a heart condition, that I actually have asthma and I'm pre-diabetic. And so I represent that legacy of growing up poor and black in America. And I and many black Americans 
are at higher risk for COVID. It's why we need everyone to so do their part to slow the spread. So, Doctor, I imagine that it's, it's frustrating for you to hear those numbers, 70 percent of the dead in Louisiana, people of color, African-Americans. Is there a particular recommendation heart. you have for that community? Well, my recommendation... Heart. My recommendation is to understand that you are at risk, you are not immune, and, and my recommendation is to all of America that we're really doing this to protect not just ourselves but each other. Every single person who stays at home, whether you're white, black, brown, or yellow, is a person who is not spreading COVID and is a person who can protect their neighbors. When you wear a cloth facial covering, if you go outside, you're doing it to protect your neighbor. Now's, now's really the time for us to come together and say, look, uh, I'm doing this not just for me and my family, but I'm doing this for my community and all the communities across the country. And it is working. We will get through this. We are seeing progress. But America has the power to change the trajectory of this epidemic. The public really needs to keep doing their part. All right, Dr. Jerome Adams, thank you very much for being here.